David Mundell, Nicola Sturgeon says that you're showing intransigence in the UK government's attitude towards Scotland's relationship uh, with Europe. Now, I know you've talked a, a lot, but what policy concessions have you made to the Scottish government? Well, we've been very uh, clear with the Scottish government that we take the document they produce seriously, and that's why we are engaged in such detailed discussions with them. But the Prime Minister, for example, when she made her Lancaster House speech, highlighted the fact that education and research was one of the issues that became a priority in her uh, speech because of representations that had been made from Scotland. Because, as you know, that is a really, really important area here in Scotland. Right. So we are listening. We want to engage uh, with the Scottish Government. We want them to work with us so that we can get the best possible deal for Scotland and the whole of the UK as we leave the EU. OK, so you say you're listening. Uh, you say you're engaged with the Scottish Government. So let me ask again. Uh, in this process, what concessions have you made to the Scottish Government in policy terms? It's, it's not a case of making concessions. It's a case of actually understanding the very large areas of common ground we already have in terms of workers' rights, in terms of security and criminal justice uh, issues and looking at what the end point that both sides want rather than focusing on the means. The Scottish Government want to see access to the European single market. We want to see access to the European No, no, the Scottish market. Government want the to Scottish remain Government members want, of the single market, people, Mr Mundell. Well, I mean, let me just well, ask they, you again, well, because you're dancing, to, you're dancing members. around this. You've listened, you've listened, you've listened, but you can't give me one example in which you've acted. You can't give me one example in which you have met I've, I've, a policy I've, position of the Scottish Government. I've, I've, I, I, well, I think I said in my very opening remarks, Andrew, that education and research and the importance to be placed on that in the European negotiations was a direct result of representations made from Scotland. I've also set out areas like workers' rights, like criminal uh, justice and security, where we're in absolute agreement with the position that the Scottish Government have. We're also clear that we both want to see businesses from Scotland trading in the European sure. single market. We both want to see people still being able to come to Scotland to take up job opportunities here. And it's just how you go about so, doing that that is the important so thing. So let me get this right. You would have not have made education or research a major priority in the Brexit negotiations if it hadn't been for the Scottish Government. What we've recognised is that that is a priority and vital area and, here in Scotland. So I'm giving the you Scottish an example government to tell of one you of the that. areas where representation... No, of course we didn't need the Scottish Government to so tell it's not us a that. Concession. What we wanted to do was what we wanted to do was to work with them to take on board issues and concerns that they have raised and that's why officials are in a very detailed dialogue but do we believe that Scotland should have a separate and different arrangement no we have not been convinced of that we're still open to that argument but we don't see the issues around access to the market or migration as being a peculiarly Scottish issues these are issues that affect the whole of the United Kingdom and we believe still that working on a United Kingdom basis is the best way okay. forward so but let me just get this clear evidence, no, no let me just uh, get this clear uh, as things stand at the moment you are not minded uh, to look at the possibility of Scotland remaining a member, a member of the single market as the rest of the UK leaves. Is that correct? I don't see a basis on which Scotland can uh, remain a member of the single market as Scotland leaves, but I see a basis on which Scotland can achieve the sort of access that businesses here in Scotland want to that oh. single market. And that's what I think ourselves and the Scottish Government should be focusing on. The Scottish, uh, the SNP manifesto, which uh, won them uh, the Scottish parliamentary elections, uh, said that should there be a significant and material change in circumstances, which of course the EU referendum was, then we have the right to hold another referendum. She says that's a cast-iron mandate. Why is she wrong?
Well, I've always said that there could be another uh, independence referendum. The debate and the argument is, should there be another independence referendum? The people of Scotland are quite clear at this time that they do not want another divisive referendum. We had one le less than three years ago. It had a decisive uh, outcome. And what we need to do is see independence taken off the table at this time <coughs> as we go forward in the Brexit mm -hmm. negotiations and ensure that we work together to get the best possible deal for Scotland and the whole of the UK. But if the Scottish government does call for another referendum, what will the Westminster government say? Well, we know what the process is uh, for a referendum. There would have to be the equivalent of the, e the previous Edinburgh Agreement. But that proposition isn't on the table. Our argument but still what, sorry, what is proposition that there should isn't be on the table? another referendum. The proposition of a request for another referendum. Well, it could There's be no before the end of this month, made. Secretary Nicola, of State. Nicola, 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 Nicola Sturgeon uh, says it's very likely, then very, very likely, and then so very, very So what will you do likely, if that happens? She has not made, she has not made a formal uh, approach to the UK but government. But if she does, what, what would the do, British government's our, attitude what, be? What, what we well our attitude is very clear we don't think there should be another referendum and we're going to continue to so, argue that case Nicholas so you would you would you would say to, to the scottish government it couldn't have a second referendum that's not what i said and i think you are perfectly aware of no. that i've said as i said in my earlier remarks there could be another referendum but we don't believe there should be and no, we I'm are going to continue as theresa may did today to make the case that there shouldn't be one, that Nicola Sturgeon should not bring forward I, of course, uh, the case for I, I another understand referendum. That, but that things may be moving on, on Mr Mundell. About but independence. Things may be moving on well, things, uh, on this, and we'll find out from well, Nicola Sturgeon later on, this Andrew, month. There is no, what I want to ask no you is this. If Nicola Sturgeon table. asks for a second referendum, or doesn't ask, but say we're going to have a second referendum, would the Westminster government be prepared to allow that to happen before the Brexit negotiations have concluded? What we are going to continue uh, to do, Andrew, is that we are going to continue to focus our argument in line with what the people of Scotland want, and that is that the independence issue is taken off the table and that we are not uh, subjected to a request for another right. independence referendum. Right, but, can, but that is a very interesting answer, Secretary of State, but it, it doesn't relate to the question I asked you. So let me try once again. Would the Westminster government contemplate agreeing to a second referendum before the Brexit negotiations are concluded, or would you tell the Scottish government that they couldn't have one until Brexit was concluded? We are in a position where there is a process for requesting another uh, independence referendum. That will be a matter for the Scottish Government to determine whether they make that request. We are going to continue, as the Prime Minister has here today, to focus our efforts on making the case that there should not be such a request and that there should not be a second independence okay. referendum. Got People that. in Scotland are quite clear they don't want another referendum. Okay. I've got that message, Secretary of State for Scotland. Thank you very much for joining us.